Welcome back guys. Today we are checking out my multi-month review of the Fuely X 9.7. I picked this one up early June and been riding it ever since. And honestly, I think Trek may have found the perfect formula here. When I got it, I was super concerned and I thought maybe a lot of people should be too and how slack, how relaxed this geometry is. But as we'll get into, this is a really, really well done product and I think you're gonna like it if you end up purchasing one. So the Fuely X 9.7 is Trek's entry level carbon fiber bike. There's no such thing as an entry level bike nowadays. This one runs up close to 6,000 Canadian dollars and just over the 5,000 American. There is some sales on right now with inventory kind of balancing out, but a lot of the new gen stuff is not as much on sale. So keep an eye out for that. With this one, you do get a mix of SLX and XT Shimano drivetrain, which shifts fantastically. I have no concerns over the SLX stuff. Really, it'd be down to the durability and lightweightness that you're losing on the XT when it comes to cassette and chain situation. It shifts fine. It shifts super nice and reliable. I haven't had really any mischiefs that I can think of. The XT derailleur is fantastic. It seems to perform well. Honestly, I have no complaints with it. And everyone should know that by now. XT has been around for a very long time. It's fast, it's snappy, and it's really responsive when you need it. Even under a good amount of pressure, it'll just make that shift very well. When it comes to brakes, this thing has four piston brakes. So it's got a lot of power to it, lots of braking. It's nothing crazy fancy. I mean, it's an entry-level Shimano braking system. But again, for most people, I'm not really sure this would make any difference. I fail to see how a better brake could exist. And um, there is more customization out of those brakes, but the actual stopping power itself, super satisfactory. Like I can go down some near vertical walls and it is very strong. I have no concerns over it. I haven't hit those big rock slabs because we don't have any around here, but I think you'd have a lot of control. I seem to be able to control myself very, very well with these brakes, and I think you will be able to as well. Suspension has been upgraded this year, so it goes a little beefy. It's 150 mil on the front, 140 on the back, so it's gonna perform significantly better than what the previous generation did in that downhill rough stuff. Now this comes shipped out of the box in the low position in the suspension settings where it can kind of tweak the frame a little bit in the minnow link and all that stuff. There's a lot of customization you can do with these bikes, but basically with one quick flip, I switched it to high and my climbing flat ground stuff seemed so much more agile, made a huge difference. And I wasn't getting as many pedal strikes. I rode it for quite a few weeks in the low setting and didn't find it too bad. I was actually, oh, this is actually pretty comfortable. I've had a Remedy in the past, which is a very similar model to this, but with 27 and a half. And in the low on that one, you'd hit pretty much everything. In the high, you'd be pretty good on it. They rode pretty similar in the low on the Fuel X, high to Remedy settings. This one in the high, Rides very good like in the flat and climbing. It's very agile, but it's not like twitchy like a race bike If you've ever rode a true XC bike or even like a Trek Marlin Like they're a lot more twitchy a little more on top of the handlebars So you're kind of bouncing around a little bit more This one still has that low and easy to ride feeling to it without getting too overkill in the kind of low and long feeling to it even in the low setting, it didn't feel crazy long. It felt longer than what many bikes I'd rode previously. I did ride that high tower and that felt much worse geometry than this. It was a mix of like XC to downhill, whereas this one feels more like just all mountain to enduro, which I know they sound like two different breakups, but it, it feels like a closer gapping. I could see myself doing enduro and downhill in the low setting on this and performing extremely well. Whereas that other one, it made such a drastic change, it, it just didn't feel right. It felt like it was stretching it beyond its capabilities. This one, they've narrowed its capabilities together and it performs very well. And I think that's a really good way of looking at it. Instead of trying to make two drastically different bikes, XC and downhill, they've just taken two very similar bikes. So you kind of got all mountain and enduro and mush them together. Obviously the lower shock mount can now be moved as well. I haven't played with that. Big benefit to that is you can actually get a coil, which would look sweet if I got a coil on there. But the Fox, the, the Fox in the rear is performing super well. So I don't see any real reason for me to upgrade to that, apart from pure Lux. If you got like an Olin's shock, those things look sick and they would finish off this package pretty well. 
In the front end, it's also matched with a Fox 150 mil. Performs super well. I've hit off some jumps, I've hit some bumps. Like all purpose riding, all general riding, no issues. Even climbing and ripping around town. You know, there's a couple trails in my town. That's about two and a half K of just pure pavement to get to. This thing rolls fast. The suspension doesn't sag too much. It's high performance and it is tunable to you. And I just follow Trex guidelines and it works really, really well. I do like the new frame design. It has stolen a little bit from like that YT kind of era bike where it's got a few more shapes and cutouts to it. It looks a little more aggressive. It looks a little beefier. It performs really well. Comparing to a 9.7 and like an eight, there really isn't any weight difference, but you do get better quality parts within that kind of change up. It's a little more muddy. The 9.7 seems like a lot better value than any previous year. Carbon frame, but not carbon wheels, aluminum wheels. Honestly, going from a 9.8 Fuel EX of 2018, 2019, I don't know what it was, to a 2020 Fuel EX 8, I noticed a comfort difference going from all carbon everything to all aluminum everything. There was a lot more vibration and feel of the trail right into my body. Switching back to a carbon frame really took away, I'd say a good like 85 to 87% of all that vibration. It really does absorb it. And it definitely puts back in a lot more control. Like throwing the bike around, you can really control it a lot more. It just goes where you point it. So it's a huge upgrade to go to the carbon frame compared to the aluminum setup that they also offer. The seat post is a 34.9, which is a little thicker than standard. Everyone's kind of going that way for the dropper post sake. It definitely performs better just the up and down, especially the down when you're sitting on it. It doesn't want to kind of flex and jam in a way that is going to prevent it from efficiently going down, just being a little thicker and a little stronger. Small improvement, but it makes a big difference when you're trying to bash that dropper post down more often than not now. I use it a lot. Some people barely use this. I use mine, <clears throat> honestly, a crazy amount. Tire choice are the XR5. I was a little concerned these would be a little too heavy, a little too rough feeling for the kind of smooth single track I ride a lot of, but I've been happy with these. They actually perform quite well. The geometry I thought combined with that tire meant it was gonna be a very slow rolling bike. They actually did do a good job of that geometry, much better so than I think the previous year's geometry. So although they have an aggressive tire on it, it doesn't seem as noticeably slow. It felt like the bikes were getting slower and slower and slower and heavier and heavier. And then they came with this one and it spec wise looked like it should be slow and heavy, but it actually performs very well. Originally I was thinking about going to a faster tire and I still think I might go next year um, when we wear these ones down a little bit more to something with a little tighter pattern on the middle just for rollability but it does look cool. They are tubeless ready. I got a puncture within the first day. It didn't seal, had to use a tubeless plug. I'm still not 100% sold on tubeless. Tubeless is like preventative maintenance. You make sure the fluid's topped up, have all these quick tools with you, and you might just be able to save it on the trail before your tire goes flat without ever having to take tire off. But 90% of the time, my tubeless sealant sealed four times and leaked four times, spraying me in the face every single time on the front. I ended up using a plug, so. Durability, not that great. It's a lot of work for a very small amount of reward. You could just get a heavy duty tire. Again, with this being 32 pounds, we're kind of losing the race of who's got the lightest bike at this point. So saving weight is like whatever. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. I normally wear a pack with a liter to two liters of water in there. So that's like five pounds as it is. Like I could just take a little less water. It's not that big of a deal. Tools, all that stuff. So weight isn't a huge, deciding factor in my, in my opinion. Does have internal storage this year as well. I have one multi-tool in there and that's it. I don't carry everything else. Obviously the rest it suggests is a tube for replacement, but then what's the point in tubeless setup? Like doesn't really make any sense. You could put all the tubeless repair tools in there though. It is does have enough room for it. Overall though, I am extremely pleased with this bike. Performance wise, I think it hits everything you need. And I say this in many videos and it depends where you are looking in bikes. Come now from this, there's the 9.8, which goes to carbon bars, carbon handlebar, and it's like a one piece and carbon wheels and then slightly better specs, but it's so small and it's, I don't even think it would be noticeable. The carbon would be nice and you shave a bit of weight. It's a huge price point though, huge price point. 
and is it worth that in parts? I don't think so. Then you got a 9.9, .9, which goes kind of ridiculous. Big upgrade would be something like this going to electronic shifting into. It works well, I've used it. Used the GX axis stuff and it shifts so fantastically, it's unbelievable. But it's just another battery to charge. I already have a camera, a microphone, GoPro, phone, laptop. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to commit to it. There's something simple about a cable, which they do fail, but I've rarely ever had it fail and batteries die, which I have batteries die a lot more often than I've ever had a cable fail. So toss and turn. That's why I think this is a really good price point because it kind of fits everything that you would want. You could put carbon wheels on there, but is carbon wheels the end game? I don't know, maybe. Aluminum wheels are making big breakthroughs now, being lighter weight, more durable, and significantly cheaper price points. And then it's really the engagement of the hubs, which makes a huge, huge difference. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. If this is the first time you're watching my videos, please subscribe. Tons of shorts, tons of other stuff. We're trying to build a channel and a like or a comment would um, help it. So I'd appreciate it. We're back on track. We're gonna get back to it, do more videos. Some people like the in-person stuff. Other people just like the ride videos where I talk about it. Just copying the video game people who just play a game and talk about the new next coming thing and it works really well formatted wise. I like it, especially come winter time. If you're looking for an all-in-one bike, which will really do honestly a bit of everything, the 9.7 can definitely do it. Looking for the budget version in this, the Fuel EX7, very similar layout, very similar everything. Probably won't be as good in a high performance situation, you know, racing and stuff, but it will take all those same trails and you will have good performance out of it. This just honestly takes it to that kind of race level or high performance. I'm gonna really chuck it around and throw it around. I don't think anyone can make a mistake in buying this bike. Going up, going to that one piece handlebar, you lose some customization, so there's downsides to that. Going up to the next level, I don't even know what you get that makes it that much better. But this, I think, is a sweet spot at around $6,000. It's reasonable, you know, bike prices have gone up, they've came down a little bit. This one seems like a major upgrade with a very small price increase from what it was previously. Much better than the Fuel X8. And the Fuel X 9.8 is significantly cheaper then, and it's not that far off it. So it's actually a nice sweet spot, which I think a lot of people appreciate. So I, I think this is a wise choice. It's got some competition out there though, this category of bike, this kind of long, low, slack bike, which is also fast, is growing. Everyone wants one, everyone's over the XC terrain, everyone's going trail riding now and really hitting it hard. So this has got a lot of competition and hopefully we can review some of those. All right, let's get out there.